cartoon characters are some of the most recognizable figures in the modern world, but not all of them are beloved. We're about to list the 10 most annoying. Stay tuned till the end to find out which of these characters blew up the moon just to be annoying. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if this is your first time visiting The Things, and give this video a big thumbs up. Let's jump right into 10 annoying cartoon characters that everyone hates. Several characters on The Loud House the Loud House is a huge smash hit. Fans have taken the internet by storm to voice their opinions on the show and its characters. It doesn't take much digging in to find out some characters are just not everyone's cup of tea. Melodramatic, cold, and selfish, that's how many describe the mopey Lucy Loud. But Lucy isn't the only annoying Loud sister. 17-year-old Lori Loud is just as bad. The eldest of the Loud siblings is characterized as bossy, selfish, and oblivious as you may imagine. When Lori bothers to address one of her siblings, it's usually in a rude big sister type of way that can get old pretty fast. At some point, the fans have criticized most every loud sister for their behavior toward Lincoln, who seems to be bullied the most in the house. Come to think of it, even Lincoln got a few critiques for his underwhelming personality traits compared to his sisters. And then there's Clyde and his weird obsession with Lori. Many fans can't seem to get on board with that either, but interestingly enough, putting all these flawed characters together actually ends up creating the best Nickelodeon show ever. The Loud House wouldn't be the same without them. Dee Dee Dexter's Laboratory is a classic cartoon and widely loved. Everyone loves Dexter's fun inventions and quirky dialogue. One thing many fans seem to agree on is that Dee Dee is annoying. One BuzzFeed contributor even called her the most annoying sister in television history. Dee Dee seemed well-meaning and just wanted to spend time with her beloved brother. Best intentions aside, Dee Dee often frustrated Dexter to the point of rage. Poor Dexter would be in deep thought or busy at work on an Convention, and Dee Dee would pop up to distract him. No one likes to be interrupted while they're working. Some fans find Dee Dee implausibly annoying. Theories have evolved to explain her absurd effort to obstruct Dexter's work. Some speculate that Dee Dee is a time traveler intent on preventing one of Dexter's inventions. Could that be why she is so often heard asking, what does this button do? Is Dee Dee secretly Dexter's daughter from a doomed future? <laughs> that theory is a little out there, but this one is more practical. Maybe Dee Dee loves her brother and wants to share her misguided enthusiasm with him. Whatever her motivation is, it's clear Dexter agrees with those who find his sister unbearable. D.W. Reed we all know Arthur, the bespeckled aardvark who loves to read. As much as Arthur and Bucky are beloved icons, little sister D.W. seems to catch a lot of hate. Some fans think D.W. is rude to her brother. She often makes fun of his glasses and vision. D.W. doesn't share her brother's love of academia. She's more interested in materialistic pursuits. The middle read child loves her allowance and bragging to her friends. Her poor social skills may be one reason that fans find her so irritating. Irritating. When she's not making fun of Arthur, she's fibbing to her friends. DW is prone to exaggeration and gets carried away with pretend play. Several episodes of Arthur center around DW's lies coming back to haunt her. No one likes a fibber, and constant exaggerations can be tiresome. DW has her positive traits. She loves her older brother, even if she gives him a hard time. Being a middle child is tough. DW may be so annoying to get attention away from cute baby Rose Rosie or her brainy older brother. Tantrums are part of childhood and DW is no exception. She seems to lose her temper often. Her bad reputation aside, it just wouldn't be Arthur without DW. Pearl Crabs constant emotional outbursts get on anyone's nerves. No one likes a melodramatic overreaction. Predators have taken note of both of these behaviors in Pearl Krabs. She's the daughter of Krusty Krab, owner Mr. Krabs, and she's spoiled, entitled, and self-centered. Pearl can't seem to keep her emotions in check, much like her anger-prone father. Anytime Pearl is on screen, you can make a safe bet that tears are in her future. Everything makes her cry from the truly sad to the mundane. 
Pearl can't seem to understand why anyone wouldn't want to be around her. When her prom date stood her up, she flooded her dad's apartment with her tears. Maybe her overreactions are what drove him away. It's no wonder Pearl is so spoiled and irritating. Her father is obsessed with money and materialism. Pearl never stood a chance growing up around that kind of avarice. Mr. Krabs seems to flip between spoiling his daughter to keep her from crying and being stingy with her to his wealth. Pearl probably grew up learning that money is the purest form of affection. This would explain her shallow personality and fragile emotions. After all, her father is known to go into a rage at the drop of a hat. Broby Yo Gabba Gabba is a cultural phenomenon. This show was created by members of the band The Aquabats and is truly the new experience in family entertainment. Broby is a green striped creature who always seems to be upset. Broby spends most of his time moping around and frowning. On the rare occasion that he's not sad or complaining, he's flailing around out of control. He seems to have very little rhythm for someone who lives in a boombox and hangs out with a DJ. This big green being goof may be charming to some, but his constant mood swings are very heavy-handed. Broby suffers from a defeatist attitude. He assumes he can't do things without even making an attempt. Few things are as annoying as a person throwing a tantrum, especially before they've even tried. He's frequently heard lamenting that he just can't do things because he's too little. Broby sends a negative message that younger people aren't capable and should give up before they try. The other characters always have to convince him to put in his best effort. No one likes a whiner and Broby is a professional complainer. Everything is too hard for a long-armed character. Broby's negative attitude, constant complaining, and wild flailing outbursts make him a truly annoying character. Squidward Chances are, if you ask anyone who the grumpiest octopus is, they'll answer Squidward. Fans of SpongeBob SquarePants have found his perpetual negativity annoying for years. Squidward has a pretty good life. He has a beautiful home, a stable job, and very friendly neighbors. So why such a long face? SpongeBob is often cited as being the most annoying character on his namesake show. His high-pitched and repetitive laugh can be really grating. Irritating laugh or no, SpongeBob SpongeBob is just trying to be a nice guy. Squidward meets his neighbor's gestures of friendship and cynicism and resentment at every turn. Better take two. Life insurance. Oh, you giblet heads. Maybe if he learned to accept love and friendship, he wouldn't be so angry all the time. It seems Squidward suffers from a real lack of gratitude. He complains about his job and isn't thankful to be employed. He complains about SpongeBob and doesn't see that he has a loyal friend. This eight-legged curmudgeon should spend more time appreciating what he has and less time being rude to his neighbors and co-workers. Squidward has even gone so far as to file a restraining order against his yellow neighbor. That's taking it a little bit too far. SpongeBob and Squidward are both employed at the Krusty Krab and have to spend time together making the restraining order a bit impractical. Caillou Whining, pouting, and selfishness. These are the traits the Huffington Post attributes to Caillou. Caillou is about four years old in the show but seems to bounce around in his development. One moment walking seems to be a challenge, but the next he's bounding a hay bale. Caillou just can't make up his mind. The Canadian toddler isn't an only child. In the show, Caillou often finds himself having to play nicely and share things with his younger sister, Rosie. It's not uncommon for him to be heard whining that he simply doesn't want to be nice to his sister. Sharing is hard and Caillou just isn't interested. There is nothing he can't throw a tantrum about. Every episode includes at least one meltdown over something minor. Asking questions is an important part of learning. I want to ride in the cart too, Mommy! Let's go. It's normal for kids Caillou's age to ask questions all the time. Caillou seems to ask non-stop questions about things he understands well. When he's not throwing tantrums, being rude to Rosie, or pestering his parents, he sets his sights on the family cat. Caillou often forces the poor pet to play with him. Scrappy-Doo 
Everyone loves puppies, unless that puppy is Scrappy-Doo. Scrappy is the rambunctious nephew of crime-solving Great Dane Scooby-Doo. Way back in the 1970s, Scooby-Doo was a huge hit. It was one of the most popular cartoons on television. The show enjoyed years of prosperity until the ratings dipped in 1979. The creators made an attempt to pull the higher ratings and new viewers by introducing Scrappy-Doo. Many would look back on this as a mistake. Scrappy is a two-dimensional dimensional character without much backstory. The details of where he came from and who his parents are seem to vary from season to season. Scrappy is not a very well-behaved nephew. He often disobeys Scooby when told to stay behind. Scrappy insists on fighting every monster all by himself and just won't stay out of trouble. While Scrappy runs his poor uncle ragged, he spreads his sassy attitude. Viewers didn't appreciate the rude little dog and he stopped appearing in the cartoon in the late 80s. His reputation was so strong that he was later written as the primary villain in the first live-action film. Peppa Pig Peppa Pig is a global hit with episodes translated into over 20 languages. Peppa can now be seen all over the globe. People spend hours talking about Peppa's annoying piggy grunts, but those are nothing compared with her rude behavior. Peppa just can't seem to be polite, even to her own father. Daddy Pig seems to be the butt of many of his daughter's jokes. You have to exercise every day. Oh no. From his alleged unintelligence to his big belly, nothing is off limits to Peppa. When she's not making fun of her father's weight, Peppa can be found making her younger brother George cry. Peppa excludes George from playing with her and tells him he's too little to do anything. Poor George never gets a chance with a big sister like Peppa. Peppa's rudeness doesn't stop with her own family. She's rude to her friends, too. Peppa can't stand to lose any game, and all the while whining incessantly if she doesn't win. She especially can't stand to see her friends win. Peppa doesn't stop there. She frequently hangs up on her friends while chatting on the phone with no warning. Peppa truly is a sore loser and will make fun of anyone she sees as more intelligent. Parents everywhere say Peppa is a bad influence. Starfire Teen Titans Go! has had a rocky reception since its debut. Some accuse the show of having too little continuity with Teen Titans. As the lukewarm reaction of fans, many suggest the show is full of annoying characters. The worst of these is perhaps Starfire. The orange alien has a loose grip on grammar that many fans find irritating. Being bilingual isn't easy, but Starfire has the habit of peppering her sentences with unnecessary thes. On top of adding the to every other phrase, she also giggles non-stop. That high-pitched and incessant giggle is enough to make anyone change the channel. It's no wonder so many have taken to the internet to voice their irritation. When she isn't snickering herself into fits, Starfire flies off the handle of her small issues. She's prone to emotional outbursts and frequently destroys whole areas when she's upset. Unpredictable and destructive tantrums make her not only annoying, but downright dangerous. What if I did something to make you hate me? There's nothing you could do to make me hate you. Starfire went so far as to blow up the moon just to bother Robin. For some reason, Robin still thinks she's amazing. He spends countless hours trying to impress her and win her affections. It goes to show you there really is someone for everyone, even the most annoying character on Teen Titans Go! We hope you enjoyed these 10 annoying cartoon characters. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on The Things.